Today we're targeting Mr. Wonderful, that is Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank gives you fundamentally bad advice that no matter who you are could possibly destroy your financial future and he does that within the first 20 seconds of a video that I'm about to show you. Quick note, if you don't yet know, check out the link below for my real estate agent course or my real estate investing course where I mentor you live privately four times a week and if an online course with live mentoring isn't enough, also see the list below to see where I'll be over the next 13 months so I can mentor you in person. With that said, let's get into the video. Buying a house or renting is a crucial decision many people have to make in their mid-twenties. Let me give you some guidance on this. Here's some questions. Are you married? If the answer is no, rent. If you're married, do you have children? No, rent. When you form a family, and you're thinking of having, let's say, two kids, that's the time to start thinking about a home because you know- oh, That's, no, <laughs> this, this is so wrong. No, 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 no. When you're thinking about having kids is not the time to think about buying a house. You should have started buying real estate before that. I have two children. And the one thing that children make very, very, very difficult is moving. And guess what you could take advantage of when you move more often? You know, I know this might be mind blowing for some people, okay, this this concept, because we constantly think, oh, a house is an anchor. I don't want to be tied down by a 30 year mortgage. I don't want to be stuck. You know, I, I might get a job transfer. I don't know if I'm going to stay in this area long term. Fine. Let's just start with a very, very simple concept. When you buy a house to live in, you could put less money down, you get better interest rates, you get more favorable terms, and when you leave, you don't have to sell. You can rent the property out. Let's say right now you're 20 years old, and what you're going to do is you're going to buy a house for $100,000 more than the one before it every few years. You'll buy one at 20 years old, one at 22, one at 25, one at 28, and one at 31. And every single year, you're buying a house for $100,000 more than the one before it, and then you keep the other one to rent. You're going to take advantage of a 30 year fixed rate loan, you're gonna put 20% down, you get some awesome interest rates, good, you're in. Now, you're really only spending $25,000, that's 20% down, plus maybe $5,000 in closing costs, 45 grand. You can see the amount of money you have to put out to actually control these properties isn't that much. Now, by the time you're 31 years old, you own five properties. Four of them are cash flowing rental properties with your management, your repairs, your vacancy, all that crap considered and covered. And you're living in a $500,000 house at 31. And now you can think about the whole children and marriage aspect, which is statistically, at least lately, where most people are getting married anyway, except you didn't squander your 20s going, I don't wanna get tied down by the 30 year mortgage. Now let's go ahead and see what this is worth at just 50 years old, which a lot of people would dream to retire at 50 years old. Yet unfortunately, a lot of people are still renting at 50 years old because of crap like what Kevin O'Leary just said. First of all, let's see how much money we spent. So between 20 and 31, we'll have spent $325,000 on down payments and closing costs to acquire these properties. The goal is to get these cash flowing properties. So again, we're putting aside maintenance, management, all that other stuff. Now you spent $325,000. We're going to assume that the value of these properties increases by 4% per year. So we're going to go ahead and do some future value math here to see what these properties are worth. At the end of 30 years, this $100,000 property will be worth $311,000. It'll be completely paid off and you only spent $25,000. Remember, we're spending all the cash flow on repairs and all the other stuff. Let's go ahead and see about the other properties. Now here's the cool thing, over 30 years, the odds are all of your properties are going to appreciate. And all of a sudden, while you spent $325,000 to control these, look what they're worth when you're 50 years old. A total of $3.5 million. That's almost enough to retire on. In fact, since the first property is already paid off because it's been 30 years, the next one gets paid off within another three years, the next one gets paid off within another three years after that, you probably could retire much earlier than most people that can't even stand to retire at 70 because they don't have any savings. 
Kevin O'Leary, this spreadsheet destroys the idea that you should not start buying until you're married or have kids, because that's gonna make it a lot harder for you to be willing to move, and you're gonna have a lot more expenses, which means making this happen becomes a whole lot harder. If you want a link to the spreadsheet, check below, but let's get into what else Kevin O'Leary says. So for about five to seven years, you're gonna be raising your children, and you need a safe place for them. And that's the time when you start thinking about buying a home, assuming both of you have a job, and you can afford to pay the mortgage. Obviously, you shouldn't buy a house if you can't afford it, but the bottom line is, a lot of people that I know right now are 20, they're 25, they're 30, they're spending two to three thousand dollars in rent, and they don't realize they could spend the same amount owning a property, they could house hack it by renting out rooms, and actually end up living for less than what they're paying in rent, and they're owning assets. You've got to make sure the mortgage payment is only one-third of your after-tax income. If you're paying more than one-third of your after-tax income, you bought a house that was too big and you can't afford it. I agree with that. You should follow that advice. Because there's a lot of other costs in life. Education, clothing for your kids, food. Maybe you're exactly. leasing a car. Maybe you've got to go in every day on an Uber to work. The point is, the mortgage itself can't be more than a third of your after- this is true, but again, it reiterates that, wait a minute, the older you get, the more expenses and obligations you have and the harder it is to start building wealth. Ah, oh, Kevin! Tax income. If both of you have jobs and you feel secure about them, that's the max. Don't let it get more than that or you'll find yourself in financial stress. And the first place that plays itself out? Divorce. You don't want to get divorced when you're raising a family. Oh my gosh. This is like, this is a slippery slope. Or, uh, this is a straight up logical fallacy. In fact, it, there's a name for this. It's called the slippery slope. That is, you shouldn't buy a house if you're not married and don't have kids. That's the claim. And then says, there are going to be a lot of expenses in life. And ultimately, if you buy a house and you don't line up the numbers correctly, which is true, you don't want to end up in divorce. So in other words, Kevin O'Leary is arguing you shouldn't buy a house if you don't have kids or you're not married because you don't want to end up in divorce no no this oh ah. family that sucks uh the only thing that sucked here was your video cnbc now we're gonna turn the tables because maybe i'll give kevin o'leary a pass because he decided to go on cnbc and maybe they twisted what he meant to say but let's see what Kevin O'Leary says with Josh Altman. In case you don't know, Josh Altman is one of the agents for Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles. A lot of investors out there, they don't know how to start. Uh, they don't know what to look for, uh, but they have some money. And they don't know how to start because Kevin's saying crap like, don't buy a house until you, uh, you know, are married and have kids. Ah! You know, 2019, it's an interesting market out there right now. Yeah. What do you think about the real estate market? Well, everybody's been saying that they're waiting for the correction that doesn't seem to come. Most domestic markets are still pretty buoyant because rates are still pretty benign. They're still pretty low. The key is to buy in the right location. That's what I find, you know. This is actually great. Kevin O'Leary just so succinctly in one line broke down what happened over the last year. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash, all prices went down a little bit. Well, well, now the big one's coming, the big one's coming, we're gonna wait to buy, and it, it, we're just still not seeing those indicators and it's still not coming. And yeah, part of the reason is interest rates keep falling. In fact, they're at 17 month lows right now. Very good point. Let's get into what kind of real estate Kevin O'Leary likes. Because it's all based on where you are. You need a great agent that understands the market, that knows what these things traded at. That matters a lot. You don't want to overpay for real estate. If you buy in a good location, it tends to really hold value for a long period of time. That's what you're looking for. Okay, keep this in mind right here. Kevin O'Leary says you don't want to overpay for real estate. And one of the ways to do that is having a real estate agent that knows the market. With me, I always say, Good markets and bad markets, a trophy is a trophy. Right. And there's always gonna be somebody who wants it. So that's the best way to hedge your bets in real estate. Uh, it's all about location. Even if you pay a little more, right. 
in the long run, it's a smarter play. Now, to me right here, this is a contradiction between what Kevin O'Leary said and what Josh Altman just said. Josh Altman says, hey, you know what? A trophy's a trophy. Even if you get a good location, even if you have to overpay, it's gonna be okay in the long run. I completely disagree with anybody that says, even if you have to overpay a little bit, it's gonna be okay in the long run. I think this could be Josh Altman referencing the luxury market where it's like, oh, this is a trophy property. This is wonderful this $20 million property. It's, it's not normal. It's not good advice for people like you and myself. Good advice to me is what Kevin O'Leary said. Surround yourself with good professionals, buy in the right pockets, and don't overpay. He actually says, understand when you're getting good value. That is the whole concept of buying real estate in the wedge, buying under market value property to maximize your return. Look, I'll say it right here. Your boy, Uncle G, Grant Cardone, he loves overpaying for real estate. And it's not because it's a good strategy. It's because it gets money into the fund, it gets deals put together, and he's got a lot of competition on the multifamily front. To me, I don't think it makes sense to overpay for real estate when there's plenty of real estate in everybody's backyard that you could buy under market value. Keep in mind when you're exploring, should I buy or rent, really consider the fact that when you own, you've got principal pay down, appreciation, you can house hack much easier, and anytime you're doing those buy versus rent calculators, stay away from that whole selling cost section that tends to skew the numbers a lot in favor of renting, because guess what? You don't have to sell real estate. In fact, if you hold it long term and do things like a 1031 tax deferred exchange, you could pretty much perpetually own real estate. Now, if you're still here, please also consider following me on Instagram at Meet Kevin. I post there pretty regularly. And if you have questions about things like the real estate investing course, the real estate agent course, or the tour that I'm going on, you can send me messages there as well. I try to get back to everybody that sends me a message, usually within a week, oftentimes a lot faster. Look forward to hearing from you and thanks so much for watching.